Hello and welcome to Orologic. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most regarded Rolex O'Marner whole homages, and this is the Heimdaller HBRM 0101. And in this review, we'll be examining that beautiful dial, we'll be looking at the packaging, the case finish, the loom, of course, and the movement accuracy report. And then in the end, we'll be seeing the good and the bad of this watch and if it's something that you'd like to consider and if that is so if this is the watch you'd like to buy there's an affiliate link below in the description below and if you'd like to use that you would be helping the channel a lot and of course something that helps the channel a lot as well is if you subscribe to the channel i have many many of these reviews and many more coming thank you very much as usual let's start with the packaging and nothing very impressive here with the Heimdaller, you've got these leatherette box, let's say, and inside you can find the watch, and you only have a warranty card that I have managed to damage quite a bit. And here it is. So it is all signed. I bought this directly from the Heimdaller store. I didn't even go through the AliExpress. So the packaging is nothing to write home about, but at least the watch comes pretty well protected as this case is very solid. And this watch is a 40.5 millimeters in diameter, a 12.5 millimeters in height, a 48 millimeters in log to log, a 20 millimeters in log width, and the oyster style bracelet fully brushed tapers from a 20 to a 16 and then back to 18 at the sign clasp and when you count the distance from the top of the top log to the bottom of the bottom log you've got a hefty 54 millimeters this is how the watch looks on my six and a half inch 16 and a half centimeter wrist so not bad and uh, even though those end lengths protrude a lot at least they curve down a lot, so they follow the form of your wrists. But those dimensions, especially that height, helps a lot with making this watch very wearable. And let's talk about this dial. And as you can see, this dial is a sunburst green. In the dark, it looks pretty much black. And when the light hits it, the sunburst just goes wild. You've got the maxi numerals, you have these Rolex of Mariner hands. We'll try to get a macro shot of those hands so we can see the quality. So at the top of the dial, you just have the Heimdaller text and the lettering is pretty crisp, pretty good. At the bottom of the dial, you got a three lines with water resist, a thousand feet, 300 meters and an automatic below it. And how the Heimdaller differentiates itself from its competition is with that H3 hot with Heimdaller all over it, mimicking, of course, the Rolex of Mariner. At 12, instead of the crown, you've got the Heimdaller shark. So that's a pretty nice touch, and I know that many appreciate this watch a lot because of that. This watch has, of course, a sapphire crystal, and even the Cyclops is sapphire. And if you ask me, that Cyclops looks pretty well aligned and the bezel insert is ceramic so the numerals and markers on the bezel are engraved and pretty deeply engraved the numbers are very fine they're finer at least than the ones on the Saint Martin which is aesthetically pretty pleasing actually the ceramic also is very reflective and seems to be very good quality and you've got the Pipa 12 that looks pretty good and that mimics the form of the pip of the sub burner. And you know I'm crazy about bezel quality when you rotate it. I believe that this is one of the weakest points of this watch, because when you try to rotate this bezel, it is very, very hard. And I'm applying all my strength there to be able to rotate it, and it's not constant either. Sometimes it'll be just hard, and sometimes it'll be pretty much stuck. So for someone who likes to fiddle a lot with watches, this watch leaves a lot to be desired, if only because of that really hard to turn bezel. So here's the Loom video, 
And as you can see, that loom is not bad at all. The loom is BGW9 with that nice blue hue and it seems to be pretty evenly applied on the markers, on the hands and on the pip. And even though the loom is good, it's not as bright as the one on that Saint Martin to the left. And I really think that a comparison video between these two watches is imminent, so stay tuned for that. What about the case and the case finish quality? The case mimics the super case, as this is a Hulk homage, so that is normal. You've got vertical brushing on the top of logs, and you've got polished surfaces on both sides. And here you can see the crown. So the crown is polished and unsigned, and the crown, of course, is a screwed on crown with one of those seals to help with water resistance. And speaking of water resistance, this watch is water resistant to 300 meters, which is a feat on itself. It means that contrary to the Saint Martin, which is only a 200 meter dive, you can actually go diving with this one. Let's talk about the bracelet. And the bracelet is, of course, a copy of the Three Link Oyster bracelet. It is pretty well done, although contrary to the Saint Martin, it doesn't have screw down pins, it just has push pins. The clasp is a mixture of pressed and milled elements. You've got a fold over security and you've got a double pusher to open. It's a scissor clasp, but the clasp on itself is just pressed. And you only have three micro adjustments. You have no diver extension, which is too bad because you can actually go diving with this watch. And I believe that I haven't spoken about pricing. I paid 170 euros. It's very similarly priced to the Saint Martin. The movement in this watch is the ubiquitous Seiko NH35 and it's hacking, hand winding, it has 24 joules, it has around 40 hours of power reserve, and the accuracy is from minus 30 to plus 40 seconds a day. But you always get much, much better accuracy than that. We'll be seeing how this performs in my time wrapper. And the movement accuracy report is, as you can see, not too bad with a plus 10, plus 11. I've been spoiled by these four arm movements, which almost always for me give better measures than these, almost all the time between plus 5 and plus 10. So I'm a little bit disappointed, but it's perfectly acceptable for the price point of this watch and for this movement. So the good and the bad. Let's start with the good. And the first good thing is the build quality of this watch. It is very well made. The crown screws very easily. The materials used are really good and there's no apparent QC issues that I can see. No alignment issues. The brushing and finishing is good and that Heimdaller Reha is a very nice touch at this price point and one that differentiates this watch from uh, so many other homages that you see today. So very good build quality, very good materials, sapphire, ceramic bezel insert, good brushing and polishing for the price point, and a very good NH35 Seiko movement. The price, although the price is what we have come to expect from these kind of watches, I think it's not bad for what you're getting. Another positive point about this watch would be the customer service. So Heimdaller sent me one first version of this watch. I had problems with it, especially with the crown that was even harder to move, so almost impossible to move than this one. I contacted them immediately. They asked me if I wanted a refund or I wanted to uh, return the watch and uh, uh, they paid for everything and they even reimbursed me the import duties that I had to pay because I had to pay them twice. So. Heimdaller you can count on their after-sale service. So that is a really good point, especially with these Chinese companies that we don't know a lot about. Now let's move to the bad points. And the first obvious and, for me, eliminating point is that bezel. As you have seen, it's so hard to turn that it's not a pleasure to turn at all. It is a pain. It might be not that important to you, and if it's not, disregard this point, but for me, I'm a fiddler, so I'm always fiddling with my rotating bezels. That is why I love the Saint Martin so much, because the rotation is so good, so firm, yet so easy to rotate, 
that it's just a pleasure. I am not the only one to say this. This has been pointed by many, many other YouTubers. And as I told you, uh, the first version I received of this watch and that I, that I sent back uh, had an even worse rotating bezel. And that is kind of unacceptable at this price point. I really hope that Heimdaller step up their game and really correct this bad issue to become a real competitor, because almost everything else is there. And that almost would be my second gripe. And that is the fact that at the price point you have just push pins instead of screw downs like in the Saint Martin and even in the Pagani designs. And even though you have a scissor clasp, you have pressed elements as well. And the number of adjustments, three is really too low. Another small negative, especially for guys with small wrists like myself, is that length with these male end links. And so, now that you know the basics of this watch, that you have seen the loom, the accuracy report, the positives and negatives, I think it's up to you to decide if this is the watch for you. Let me tell you that at the price, I would very much prefer the Saint Martin, because even though it has comparable quality in most respects, just that rotating bezel is so much better on the Saint Martin. But if you don't mind the bezel, by all means, this watch is a very good value for the money. So that's been all for me. Thank you very much for having watched the review. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and to subscribe to the channel as it does really help me a lot. And of course, if you like this watch, you can go ahead and use those links below to buy it and help the channel by doing so. So again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.